And let's go look at this week. I just opened this up this week um, for what's on uh, the week four assignments. So you'll see COVID week four. Uh, what we've got going this week is we got nose wheel steering, a couple videos. Uh, there's PowerPoint on nose wheel, and then there's a uh, wheel disassemble. There's one more thing going up there, and that'll be a thing on bearings, on wheel bearings. So that's not up there yet. The only work that's going to have to be handed in this week is going to be this wheel disassemble. And this is a, a lab that's very similar to that lab that we did on taking the wheel off the axle. It checks another box for the FAA requirement is what it does. And it makes it so when we do go to make stuff up, it'll be a little quicker. The other thing that we're going to talk about, uh, and it'll probably be on next week's thing, but we're going to talk about it today, is brake master cylinders. So that's what we got on the schedule. Um, so what I want to do without further ado is let's look at the PowerPoint program on uh, nose wheel steering. Can everybody see the PowerPoint? Or is that not showing up? I don't see the PowerPoint yet, but I see your screen. Okay, well, let me do it this way. May have to, give me just a second. And I think what I got to do is I think I got to click over here on a different share of the screen. Well, heck, come on. Here we go. Now we go. All right. So we're going to say share video, share screen. Okay. Now you should be able to see it. Yep. Yep. Okay. Okay. So um, I'm going to skip a lot of the stuff. Here's a steering like what we have on the Cessna 150. There's a steering rod. When you push on the rudder pedal where you see that arrow pointing, it, it makes that mechanically move. Very simple. Here's a large aircraft uh, nose wheel steering system. You can see there's a set of cables. So like they show up here on the top, they show a uh, steering drum. And then from the steering drum, let me see if I can do that. Let's do a laser pointer. Okay, here's my steering drum up here. So that was what we called the tiller on the Boeing 767. It runs these cables. And the cables run down and to the steering wheel. And then when we turn this little this little cable wheel, what it's doing is it's making it's porting hydraulic fluid either left or right to make it make it steer. One of the funny things that well, not funny, but one of the things that happened when I worked on Gulf Streams is this cable system ran right along the gear doors of the um, uh, of the landing gear and when the landing gear went down if these cables were loose it could catch the outside structure of the wheel well and make the wheel turn so it snagged the cable and make it turn all the way like to the right and when they when the they touched down the nose it would do some really nasty things here's a tiller so these wheels look different some of them look round some of them are are kind of a partial quadrant okay so the next thing we want to look at on a small airplane is called a shimmy dampener. Now, what happens is when you touch down, uh, especially if the airplane's still going pretty fast with these little airplanes, you, you'll get a whole bunch of shake in the airplane. And all this is is just a little shock absorber. And it's just like those shock absorbers that when you go into a, a, a store or something like that, those doors that swing closed. If you look up on the top, there's a little couple of arms that keeps the door from slamming. Well, it's the same type of shock absorber. It's just got a, it's got a small bleed hole here. And when you push this rod, when the gear pushes the rod here, 
then fluid has to transfer from one chamber to the other and it comes through this calibrated orifice. So, and so that's, that's how it keeps from, from shimming back and forth. Okay. All right, let's see if, whoops, next. Okay. So let me see, they've got um, some different types of devices. This is a device that's in a larger landing gear. And this has the same kind of oil passage system. It's just larger, it's got bigger chambers, and it's got a vein. And so you can see there's these veins here. And as this tries to rotate, if it tries to rotate real fast, this just makes it slow down because fluid has to transfer from one port to the other. It'll transfer through this center shaft. Just another means to keep these things from shaking. Here's another picture of it. A lot of parts to this. If you look over here on the right, the A, B, A, B, those are the different chambers. Pretty simple without going into it. O-rings, it's filled with hydraulic fluid. What happens to these, uh, as far as maintenance goes, is sometimes you have to service the hydraulic fluid. Okay, and I'm gonna skip that one. Here's a picture of one installed on an airplane. That's what that thing is. That's a shimmy dampener. Keep that wheel from shaking. This is a non-hydraulic style. This has like rubber inside it of it so instead of hydraulic fluid i don't know how these exactly well, i guess here's how it works it's got a little rubber cushion in here a couple springs these shimmy dampeners were well known on like the cessnas for wearing out and you're always working on them and things like that they get they get damaged real easy and these things were an upgrade to that okay well that's easy enough got rid of got rid of that one that was um okay all right we're back um that got rid of our nose wheel steering thing for today. Let's do another PowerPoint and then um, we'll jump into wheel bearings. We'll do another PowerPoint and then we'll take a, and then we'll about the bottom of the hour, we'll take a little break and come back and see if we can wrap up some of this stuff. This is actually gonna be a pretty easy week for you guys, I think. Uh, next week, we got a few labs to knock out, but not terrible. So um, you guys see my PowerPoint okay? Give me a thumbs up or a... Yep. yep. All right, thanks, yep, Matt. Okay, so let's go from beginning. Okay, different types of, of bearings on here. We start out, he, uh, I'm trying to understand this. We start out and it's got roller bearings and then it's got ball bearings and roller bearings and all the different types of ball bearings. As far as roller bearings, there are tapered, spherical, cylinder, and needle bearings are the different types of bearings. So this is a tapered roller bearing, and this is what we see in wheels. You guys, you guys have had uh, had some of this stuff off, I think. If not, we saw it in our in our other um, in our other lab here. So here's a roller bearing, tapered roller bearing, and then the outer piece that's laying on top, this ring is called a race. And let me go back, find my laser pointer. Here we go, there's my laser pointer. Okay, there. this is what we call the race. So there's our bearing and our race. So here we've got, um, shows our, let's see, I may have to move this a little bit. Okay, good. We've got our outer, race this outer ring cup is what i call the race it's got a taper into it then there's an inner cone and these bearings these rollers will ride on the cone and then there's a cage that holds them all together so that's our different parts of that here's our wheel with a cutaway this is a large airplane wheel uh think boeing so here's our bearing assembly in here and it's got the race is pressed in the race is pressed in here to the wheel and then we got a set of roller bearings there and say, got the exact same thing over here. We got another roller, set of roller bearings over here. Here, they're showing a nice cutaway of the tire. They did a nice bandsaw job. You can see how the tires kind of put together. That's kind of cool. And then we got a nice cutaway of the wheel and you can see there's a, a, a tie bolt is what we call it. It's just a bolt, but it's a heavy duty bolt. It's uh, die penetrant inspected every time you take them apart. It's called a tie bolt and it, bolts the wheel halves together on this. Okay, so here this is going to go into like a cleaning machine or something, and we're going to clean these bearings. 
every time we take a wheel off, we're going to repack the wheel bearings. These are pretty big bearings. So they're going into the wash. We're going to wash them with solvent. And then we're going to uh, blow them out with compressed air. We never, we never spin a bearing with air. Uh, Stoddard solvent is what I call mineral spirits. It's just your basic solvent. And sometimes they use nastier stuff like Varsol and naphtha. Uh, and then you use a brush and you brush the grease out of it. Uh, there you go. Never rotate the bearing while drying with compressed air. All right. I always avoid steam cleaning of bearings. I didn't know that, but it probably makes sense to me. The surface finish of the metals will be compromised, leading to early failure. Okay, so once we take these apart, we're going to inspect them. I'm going to look for pits. I'm going to look for what we call galling. I'm just going to, I, I should see a nice, smooth, shiny roller and a nice, smooth, shiny race. And if I don't, these things aren't terribly expensive. So it's, it doesn't cost a lot of money to change a bearing out, not in, not in consideration with other, other things on the airplane cost. Okay, so pretty much they're just saying what I just said. Um, flaws detected in a bearing or grounds for replacement. Okay, here's some different flaws. This is what I call galling. This is where the, the mating surfaces have been running together and putting big grooves and they, they, they put a groove in the metal that's not like a cutting groove, it's like a grinding or a scraping type. If the metal gets hot, it welds. Yeah, we've seen that before. This is, um, this is pretty much what you see. If you see something like this, at the same time, you will have other parts that look like that. And this is what happens to the rollers when galling starts happening. Maybe this thing's run without grease, or maybe something caused this to jam. That's kind of what happens. Lack of insufficient lubrication causes a bluish tint. That bluish tint means it got hot. The ends of the rollers were overheated, yep, to show the discolor. All right, so that's what happens when this stuff gets hot. This is called brunelling. This is an, an impact damage. Looks a lot like galling, but, but it's smaller. Indentations in the bearing cup and race. Vibration and premature bearing failure. Okay. All right, so I'm going to skip this. Too much reading for me. False, I guess false brunelling is, is, is an, another possibility caused by vibration in a static state. Okay, this is what they call false brunelling. It's a metallurgy term, I don't know. All I know is if you look at bearings and they're not shiny and smooth, they're probably going to get rejected. Uh, grayish black on the bearing cup caused by water that's gotten into the bearing. Those, those are stains, stains and surface marks. Okay, and I've seen that before. This is what you see when, when in something sets. If something sets for a long, long time and you don't move the airplane, it's been sitting there for two years, uh, you'll see that kind of thing. And that's staining and surface marks. It's kind of a corrosion thing, water damage. Okay, what are they showing us here? Etching. More corrosion. Uh, same type of thing. Airplane's probably been sitting there for a long, long time. Okay, this is bruising. Now, I'm not familiar with bruising. I guess you can see here that we've just got places where it looks like your skin, I guess, when it gets bruised. Okay, I have seen this. I've seen this here in the center, top center. I always thought that was kind of when you starts to flake away. I always thought some of these things might be chrome, but maybe not. But you'll see metal flake away, so maybe that's what they're calling bruising here. This here and on the top right, I'm not sure. I haven't seen that before. Okay, bearing cup does not, okay, if, if so if we have the, the race is installed inside the wheel, we don't knock that out to inspect it. We just leave it there. We can inspect it visually. Um, and if we see it, then yes, we have to remove it. Those are, those are pressed in place. Okay, there, 
there they're showing at the Baron Cup, and you can see the taper in here that matches the rollers. Okay. Uh, the wheel's heated, and the cup is cooled by dry ice before it's tapped into place. Okay. I've also seen people shoot free on, on these things, and then knock them into place real quick. That's an interference fit. I've also seen people press them out dry, which I guess you can do, but we've done it before. I've done it before with ice. Okay, bearing repair. I don't know if we're going to be able to watch this or not. Tapered roller bearing repair. I know your parts. Let's skip that for now. If we have to, we'll come back and try to watch that at the end. So, hey, how about that? We're It's 28 minutes after the hour, and um, let me see if I can figure out how to stop this. Whoops. Let me do it this way. Stop share. There we go. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take about a five-minute break. Let's be back here at 35 minutes after the hour. Got another PowerPoint to go over. Uh, and then I'll go over the um, – we'll go over the PowerPoint or the, the wheel disassembly lab. Um, I think we may have one more section, but uh, we're certainly going to be done. Uh, it's not going to be much more than an hour today. So this is going to be a e pretty easy week. So be, uh, be back in five minutes. There's probably a uh, thing where you can say that you're away. I don't know, under reactions? No. Let's see. Well, at a minimum, you guys got your mics. Muted and your screen muted. Yeah, I'll probably just I'll be right back. Yeah, well I'll just get going at thirty-five at thirty-five after I get gone, so Okay. And I'm going to turn the recording back on. I paused it for a minute. Uh, I'm going to look real quick and um, let's see what else we got here on this week. So, yeah, we've got that video and we got the lab. We got the thing on bearings. So, and let me look. Um, give you guys a little bit of an idea. Let me share a different screen here. And we share that one. And we go back to, let me move that. Whoops, get out of here. Okay, this is my, um, this is my planning thing here. So what we've got left for this class is we got nose wheel steering. Uh, we're going to take a quick look at master cylinder so we can finish that up. And next week I was going to try to finish up the the different brakes. And if we get the anti skid in, maybe we can get out of here a little bit early. But I've got to get through uh, shoe brakes, disc brakes, master cylinders, multi rotor brakes. D boosters and anti skid systems. So that's what we've got left. So next week might be a little heavier. That's why I was going to try to do master cylinders. Just a little bit of discussion on master cylinders today. So then we would just have the different brakes and anti skid. And I could do anti skid on the 29th. That'll be absolutely minimal. And I've got, what do we got here? Did I list any labs? Let me look here and see what I got for labs. Okay, we've got, it looks like we've got um, the nose wheel, demount and inspect tire, clean and store tires, that's be quick. So there's two or three labs, the just brakes, we're going to have to hold off on that lab, I think, I don't know. We got, th we got about three labs next week and maybe one or two labs the following week, but we'll do those as a group. If you guys, if you guys want, we'll make it a little bit more livable. So that's my plan there. Let's stop sharing on that one. Okay, so what else we got to talk about?
we got the lab. Let's talk about the lab here. Okay, so this lab is a lot like the lab that we did on the tire removal. What my goal here is, is, is when we do the makeup time, I wanted to be able to do just one day. And my plan was we got to remove, a, we got to do the wheel, take a wheel off the airplane, pack the bearings, adjust the brakes, put it back on, check the brakes, inspect the brakes, put it back on. And we got to disassemble a wheel. And I think that's it. So my plan was, is when we can get back and meet, I'll set up several stations. We'll take a couple airplanes and do this. We'll set up different stations in the hangar. And then we guys can ro rotate through disassembling a wheel and uh, doing a, a tire change and brake inspection and brake check. And that way we could knock it out in one day, in one four hour lab, I think we could knock it out now that we've already done these parts of the lab so this is half the lab and then and then the makeup will be the rest of the lab so what you've got is you got the same basic thing as what we had last time i'm giving you a maintenance manual for the cessna 150 and you're going to sequence these photos here's the maintenance manual this is right in the lab these are in powerpoints so and then here's our part number for this wheel and that's got torque values and then you're gonna put these guys in the order just like you did last time. You're just gonna take the slide and you're gonna move it up to where it goes in order. So I think there's about, there's 33 slides. Some of these are pretty close to where they go. And then you write a, a work step. You don't have to write a work step in every single slide, but write a work step in here on the right as we go along. This will also be available in a PDF version too. So that's how that lab works. It's basically like, like the lab you guys already did. You guys did a good job on it. I don't know how long it takes. It probably takes you 20 minutes, a half an hour to figure it out, come up with those. But your maintenance manual instructions are right there too. So, so you guys got a pretty idea. It's, it's, it's not rocket science to do that. Okay, so I'm gonna stop sharing that. Let's see what else we got for this week. What I may do too is I may, if you guys start to get ahead, I think Gary's gonna lighten up on some of his course load here, pretty close to the end. So if we got some more stuff, I'll start turning my stuff, my stuff on a little earlier so that if you get it done, you'll have more than a week if you wanna get ahead a little bit. So let's look at what else we got up here. We've got, Let me go over to here and share this. And what I want to do now is just for a few more minutes, we're going to talk about, um, we're going to talk about brake master cylinders. So I've got up here some of the different, oops, different types of brake master cylinders. So here we are, this is kind of like, you guys can see the screen okay, right? Set of brake pedals, master cylinders, somebody give me a thumbs up or something like that. Yep. Okay, perfect. Okay, so here we can see the brake pedals. This is on something like the Cessna 150, the Beechcraft airplanes, all that. So we've got these, we've got these master cylinders here, you can see they're over here on the right-hand part of this picture. So when you push with your toes, it compresses the rod in that master cylinder. And I need to size this, resize this. Let me get rid of that. Is there a master cylinder on both sides of the cockpit, or is it just on the uh, left side? It depends on the airplane. So like my airplane has them on both sides. There are some airplanes like the Beechcraft Bonanza that only have them on one side. So, um, if we look at this picture here, here's a picture of master cylinders. And what you'll see is there's a plunger here. There's an O-ring. Can you guys see my pointer? 
Yes. My hand? Okay. Okay, so my little hand here is showing there's a plunger here and there's a spring underneath. And as you push down on this rod with the brake pedal, it pushes the plunger down and that applies pressure through this brake line to the wheel. It's that simple. It's as simple as falling off a log. So let's look up here and let's see another view of a typical master cylinder. Let me get rid of that. Okay, you can see here on, on this one picture, the Grove master cylinder. This is exactly what I have in my airplane. The reason it's wide there on the top is this acts as a reservoir. So I can put several ounces of fluid in this. And then if you look at this next picture, here's the picture off of Flight Mechanic. And you can see this one's kind of installed upside down where the fluid's underneath here. And that's another way I've seen these in an airplane. That, I haven't seen that. This is out of the book. This has a rubber boot. Now this looks like more like something on a car, but there are some airplane installations. You can see the piston down here and you see a spring and then you see this output to brake on the very right hand side of this picture is the fitting. So typically what we have to do with these is we will take these things apart and we will replace the o-rings in these let's see if we got something that shows us an o-ring there's little o-rings in there and that's all that goes bad these things they're about the simplest things you ever saw to work on um i wonder if they got one blown apart here they should have a plunger this there's a style here this one right in the center uh this style has a reservoir connected to it so coming out of this top plug port will be a line that goes to a little can that holds hydraulic fluid. 5606 is usually what's in them. So here is, let's see if we can see a big picture of this. Well, that's not, that's not the side I was looking for. Okay, well, anyway. Here's a good picture here. Let me see if we can see this. Okay, here's what I was looking for. This is your typical thing. There's an O-ring. You can see the two black O-rings. So usually you have a snap ring holds this, holds the cover on, you pop the snap ring off, and you pull this whole thing out, and you place the O-ring, put it back in, five minutes, you're done. You go to the bill and you write up the invoice and you say, replaced all O-rings in re completely repacked master cylinder, $150. There you go. And then you go to Starbucks. And that's basically it. These master cylinders are pretty simple things. There's not much to them. Um, we got a little section in your book. And that'll be one of the other things we have to do. I have a station set up to pop open a master cylinder and replace the O-rings. And so we'll, we'll do that when we all get together. And I think that's it. So what we've got for the week is you're going to owe me this lab on uh, where you take the uh, and sequence the uh, disassembly and reassembly of the wheel and that's going to be it for this week next week we'll have a couple more labs i'm going to if i've got a lot of lab work i'm not going to have quizzes up there so we got some quiz scores in the books for you guys so that's going to get us here pretty close and i'd say another week uh it might be another we have might have two more meetings which will be this week and next week and then we'll have the the final exam will be online it'll be an open book final exam You'll have one shot at it, um, but it'll be open book and you'll have a time limit on it. It'll be enough time limit to get it done, but not enough time limit to be Googling everything, every answer. So, and I will have a study guide that I'll put up to tell you guys what to study for for the final.
So anybody got any questions? You guys can open up your mics or open up your webcams or whatever if you want, or you can text me a question. That's that's going to be it for today. I could probably stop the recording now.